What up, it's your boy Dick Incredible Man, and yes, I am back at it again, and this is Black Clover episode 154 review, and I gotta say, the fight wasn't long, but it was enjoyable nonetheless. Let's get into this episode, man. I don't think I do it good, no, I think I do it great. They would do it if they could, they can't do it, so they hate. Everybody wanna look, but nobody wanna play. Stealing eyes. This episode kind of is like a continuation of um, the ending part of 153 where we see Langers kind of listening to everybody and finding out that Yuno has been promoted to the same class of Magic Knight that he is. And this gives Yuno an opportunity to further along with his goal of being the Wizard King. And then we see like a flashback of Langers and Yuno um, having this whole conversation. And, and we, we hear that Langers is talking about Asta and you know having a connection to ask them like why why are you hanging around him and you are above him now and and you know was like no I'm not I've always looked looked on par with Aston he's my rival because we both want to be the wizard king and you know's like where does it say that peasants can't become the wizard king so it's a nice staple and we all know how you know feels about Aston how Aston feels about you know but we see that this is butting heads with Langris, but now we're dealing with a different Langris as well because after the whole thing with the Elven arc and we see him kind of contemplating a lot of stuff and thinking about a lot of things, this isn't the same angry and upset Langris that we've been dealing with. He's he's apologetic to his brother. He's nicer to Miss Phoenix. Um, he's a better overall person a little bit. He's still, he's still dealing with some flaws that he has, but... He's becoming an overall better person after everything that happened with him trying to kill his parents, almost murdering his brother. So, like, Langris is contemplating a lot of stuff, and, you know, being promoted, it opens up, like, another door that Langris can go through to further along his um, character development, if you will, because this that's what we're dealing with. And I like the idea of seeing this more developed, more conflicted Langris, because every time we've seen him in the flashbacks and everything else, he's been a little pompous twerk. But now we see that he's contemplating his decisions. He's thinking about everything. He's thinking about the uh, the Golden Dawn itself as a whole. He's thinking about his um, crew members. He's thinking about his brother. He's thinking about Miss Finnis. He's thinking about a lot of stuff. And this ep episode showcases all of that. And to where it comes to the point to where we see a bunch of members talking about, you know, being the same status as Langris and like, well, could you know become the next vice president of the Golden Dawn? And then Langris hears this, and then next thing you know, we see him having a conversation with Miss Finnis, and we get their whole little detail about what um Fineral has been doing and why why Langris is kind of going through what he's going through. You can kind of tell their whole conversation is going back and forth. And Langris comes to this conclusion that he has to fight you know. So he fights you know and he gives up this whole premise and everything like well okay well let's see how strong you are he can he comes out to be the bad guy and you kind of think that he's he's reverting back to his old roots after hearing everything that he's heard about you know being promoted and some of the other members stating about you know becoming the next vice captain so you think he kind of reverted a little bit but that's not the case he sees this as an opportunity to kind of close I guess you could say close the door or close the chapter on him being the vice captain of the Golden Dawn because he's thinking about what he did when he was taken over by the elves and he's, he's dealing with a lot of stuff. Everything is weighing heavy on Langris at this moment. And with the fight between him and Yuno, we see that at the very beginning of the fight, he comes out with all of this other stuff. He's trying to egg Yuno on and Yuno's just being, you know, you know, he, he doesn't see anything. He's like, Oh, okay, well sure. I'll fight you. So, they get into this fight, and Langris is trying to lose intentionally from the very beginning, but you know, being you know, he catches on, you need to take this serious, or you might get hurt, you know what I'm saying? So he's like, take this serious, or you're going to end up injured. So Langris decides to take it serious, knowing that you know knows that he's faking, everybody else is on looking like, oh wow, this is getting serious. So then we see Langris dive into his attacks that we've seen and the Magic Knight selection and stuff, we see Langris getting serious in this fight now, which is fun. And like I said, the fight between him and you know was good. It was very short, but it was very good nonetheless. And it, it just egged on the character development for Langris. And we get to see Yuno in another light as well, because we also know he's not an airhead, but he's just, 
he's blatant about everything. You know, he, he doesn't sugarcoat anything. If he has something to say, he's going to say it outright from the very beginning. That's just who his character is. And that's why we love, you know, as a character. But him and Langris having this whole fight, we see Langris going in. We see, you know, going in, you know's in his whole little um, glowing king um, armor. Well, not his uh, whole little assimilation um power langris is launching his huge massive attacks and boom they're just going we see the animation it's going back and forth it was good a short fight but a good fight nonetheless and then we see that at the same time langris is tapping into the powers that he tapped into when he was possessed by the elves which is a shield made from his um what is oh, what is this magic called um i know what it's called um spatial magic Okay, I don't know why I drew a blank. But anyway, he's using the spatial magic that the elf used when he took over his body as a defense strategy. He kind of tapped back into that power and feeling. And we see the onlookers, the other members of the Golden Dawn, kind of like, oh, wow, he's using the power that he tapped into when he was the elf. How did he? So it's a, it's a nice fight going back in between him and Yuno. And we see that Yuno's taking some hits. Langris is getting in some action and Langris is taking some hits. We're, we're getting there. And in that moment, we see that, you know, uses an after image and boom, bam, he ends up behind Langris with his sword and like it's finished. But it was a nice thing because the fight didn't need to really have a resolution. It didn't really need to be concluded. We didn't need to really have a definitive winner because it wasn't actually really a fight. Langris was doing this to try to distance himself from the Golden Dawn because he wanted to show to show that he's sorry for everything that he done and being, while he was possessing everything that happened. And he's going through some stuff and he's trying to reach that further character development and become a better person. Not a great person, but a better person nonetheless. And we see at the end of the episode that he's having this whole moment with, you know, and he's telling him, you know, well, it is what it is. I made that promise with myself. You know, making the statement known that you know, you don't have to leave. We didn't agree to any. Well, I made that promise to myself. So he decided to leave. He's talking with Vengeance, and Vengeance knows exactly what he was doing and what he was going through, and he still decided to leave. And, and Vengeance told him that you know the door's still open if you still because you're still a member of the Golden Dawn. Then we see him having that nice farewell with his brother and miss finish and he was like well okay i got it. i got some stuff to figure out i'm going on a journey so it was nice to have that moment and at the very end of the episode we see the black bulls getting all their members ready because now we're headed to the heart kingdom and i'm hoping that 155 is where we're going to dive straight into um the arc itself like because it feels like this episode was the closing continuation of everything with the training arc because now it feels like we're ready to dive into the actual spade kingdom arc because now we see that um everybody's ready everybody's gotten their training everybody that's going off to train is going off to train and every everything's ready everything's set up so like i don't know what else we need or need to see besides the actual arc starting to take place i feel like 155 is going to be that moment that we take place if not i can probably say that they may wait until maybe like 160 i don't know but 155 seems like a nice stopping point to dive right into the Spade Kingdom arc. I don't know. That's just my speculation. But overall, it was a very nice episode. And like I said, having that fight between Langris and um, Yuno was a nice fight. We didn't need a conclusion. We didn't need, like, the satisfaction of somebody winning. It was just nice to have that. And we can watch and wait for that actual fight to take place a, a, a later on down the road but overall i loved it it was nice to see that teaser between them and we have um some comedy at the end with everybody picking their face out at the black bulls base and and gordon going off and just talking to himself the entire time he's like oh well i can't go with you guys you know i gotta go train on my own so i'll see you when i come back so that was nice overall man just a nice fun episode this your boy Dick Incredible, man. Don't forget to smash the like button until you can't smash it anymore. Comment down below and I'll be sure to respond to each and every one of them and subscribe. But only if you really want to, man. And remember that anime matters, anime is greatness, and anime is life, man. Peace out.